from this year. For me, this trial was informed by, you know, hate. You can't put it away from what transpired. If you saw what we tried to do when we were cross-examining the witnesses, we started with a statement that was made by the Republican president when then he was in the opposition. You know, he made a very clear, he gave a very clear instructions to the uh, UPND leadership in Chinsad. He said that they should compile a list of people who they thought were responsible for atrocities in Chinsari and Shwanan. And on that list, if you remember, he placed Honorable Stephen Campion as the first person on the list. So you can't divorce what the President said at that time from what we have experienced on this trial. The state called 12 witnesses, and as a court uh, explained, None of those witnesses said anything that tied Honorable Campiongo and the five others to the crime that they were standing charged with. Uh, what is of concern to me is that you know, this offense is a very serious felony, the punishment of which is 15 years imprisonment or life imprisonment. So it is only when the, the, the state has a very good case to try that they should even attempt to charge people under that, under that section. But because they were informed by hatred, and because their mindset was made up with what the president had said at the beginning you know, during his campaign, they thought it was an opportunity for them to bring Stephen to trial. They thought it was an opportunity for them to bring the rowdy people they believed you know, were committing crimes to trial and charge them with a very hideous offense of endangering an aircraft. But if you saw even how the court was examining, I mean, uh, assessing the evidence, the court clearly stated that all the testimonies that were given by the state, none of it pinpointed any of those people and tied, and tied them to the crime that the court was trying. Especially Honorable Stephen Campion, where the court was very clear that it is only that people were told what to come and say about it. That's why they tried to tie him to the offense. And the evidence that the people gave was, was at variance with each other. One witness would come and speak about the motor vehicle whose number plate they didn't know. The other witness would come and talk about the vehicle being a Pajero. The other witness would come and say he didn't know what kind of vehicle was being driven. But the police officers who were on the scene all attested to the absence of Honorable Campiongo within the vicinity of where the crime was taking place. So this is, an, this is a trial that, in my assessment, this is a case that should never even have been brought to court, you know, given the evidence that the court uh, you know, gave, I mean, received. But also, if you saw, the dealing officer himself was the one who was found very wanted. Because he came onto the scene six years after the, the alleged crime took place and did nothing to investigate. He drew conclusions by hearing, you know, from people that themselves, who themselves were culpable of having committed other offences within, the, within what transpired. They are the ones that he decided, he decided to bring onto the witness stands to come and give evidence against like this person. So we didn't expect anything, you know, of a case to answer being established by the state. Okay, even the accused that has remained the accused number one. And, you know, of course, because it was mentioned by more than three witnesses of having driven the motor vehicle, whose identity even now nobody clearly knows. So we are confident that when we come to court, we will adduce uh, sufficient evidence to defend him. But of course, we'll leave it to the court to make a determination of whether to find him guilty or not of this offence. But the confidence I have is such that uh, I, think, we, I think we'll put up a very good defence. Before we come to Mr. Lemba, uh, yes. you are also a politician coming from Lukasha constituency. Yes. Uh, I want to get a legal comment on the aspect of the fight against corruption. The political uh, players feel that the current political fight is not really as it should be, but it is a political uh, persecution as it is being yeah. termed. What is your legal interpretation? Well, I, I, you, if, you, if you want to say it legally, um, for me, I've already drawn a conclusion that with the way we are moving as a nation, we have already lost the fight against corruption. We are not doing what we need to do to fight against corruption. Look at what has transpired. When this government was put into office, the first thing they did is they transferred the reporting structures of the investigative wings to the office of the president. The Republican president is the one now who controls the investigative <laughs> wings via Gazette Notice number 1223 you know, of 2021. All the, 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 the Anti-Corruption Commission, 
the Drug Enforcement Commission, Public Defender, FIC, they all report to the President. That itself, you know, shows you that we have already compromised this institution. Their autonomy has already been put in question. But even more importantly, look at the example, use an example, the experience we had with the Drug Enforcement Prosecutions and the Anti-Corruption Commission and DEC. They have gone, you know, at cross purposes. They have actually clashed. And uh, what we are seeing now is that there's a, there's, a, there's a quest to remove the DPP. Even when we see what has transpired, the DPP has not done anything for which one should merit an inquest to even remove from office. But for me, it shows you clearly that the fight against corruption you know, has, has been lost. Again, if you see what is happening, in the, I think the fight against corruption has, has now become synonymous with chasing after PF members who may have served in government or in parliament or in other important you know, positions in the previous government. We are not saying you shouldn't question what they were doing, but when the questioning is informed by a malicious and a prejudicial uh, you know, approach, it, it, it questions the, the veracity and the validity of the uh, fight against corruption. What we are seeing now is that there's a narrative that has been created. If you open any newspaper now, if you open any government, uh, if you go on any government channel, NBC, for instance, there's a narrative that has been given that PF was a corrupt gang, everybody in PF was corrupt. And once the, 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 the citizens internalize that thinking, when you say Mr. Chisanga has stolen, it's, it's, it it's investors everything. Mr. Sanga now has to defend himself. Instead of the state proving the case against Mr. Sanga. So the way I've taken this fight against corruption, we've taken it in the reverse. It, it is not different from what happened under MMD. It is not different from what happened under UNIP. Where it suggested that you take people that who are your political opponents and you use them as the ponies in fighting against corruption. The fight against corruption must be given what is called political by the government that is in power. But it should be left to in institutions which are which have got trained staff, institutions that are established by the law to carry out the investigations or their roles independent of any type of interference. You know, Honor Campion was mentioning, for instance, what transpired in the case of Sinon. Everybody knows what happened. I mean, the minister found himself at a place, uh, the private investor's place was Chinese, with the Chinese invest, uh, ambassador who hadn't even presented his credentials. And when people raise issues of whether this matter must be investigated or not, what we were told is that the public and president just made a phone call and was told that no, what the gentleman was doing was collecting, you know, was collecting calendars. And the, and the matter ended there. But when you hear, you know, that uh, Honorable X and Y had a gen set at his premises, you send the battalion of all this joint investigation commission to go and inquire about how that person got the gen set, simply because that person was patriotic front. You don't call that kind of, uh, that kind of fight against corruption credible. It's not credible. So unless we reintroduce credibility in the fight against corruption, and this goes to the appointment, to the reporting structures, you know, to the autonomy that must be exercised by these institutions. That's when we're going to have a fight against corruption. We have said as patriotic front many times, we support the fight against corruption. Even I would like to make sure that anybody who store anything in Ugasha constituents, you know, during the, 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 the past government, or even the other governments before, or even currently, those must be brought to book because when you are in public service, you are supposed to be a servant of the public. But when you, you know, you reduce the fight against corruption against the pursuit of your political opponents or perceived political opponents, then you lose credibility in the fight against corruption.